What's good, GFL? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today I have my college basketball tier list. I will be putting my rankings of this college basketball season thus far, February edition. The first team we'll be putting in this tier list will be the number one ranked team in the nation, the Gonzaga Bulldogs. I think to no surprise, Gonzaga has to be in this number one tier. Right here, we, we can see there's a photo of Jalen Suggs. Their great point guard, probably gonna be a lottery pick. Uh, I think that Gonzaga deserves to be in this tier one because, you know, they're the number one seed. They're 17 and 0. They beat great teams like Auburn, Kansas, Iowa, and West Virginia. And they have a great, a great young front, great backcourt, great frontcourt. They also have Corey Kispert, probably gonna be a lottery pick also along Jalen Suggs. And I believe if they don't lose another game this season, they will remain the number one seed and will have a number one seed in the NCAA bracket. And now, and now joining Gonzaga in the tier one list, I got the second ranked team of the nation, the Baylor Bears. A reason why I think Baylor deserves to be in tier one and is in the conversations to be the number one team in the nation is because of the great backcourt, Jared Butler and Davion Mitchell. I don't know when you guys are watching this, but yesterday they had an absolute phenomenal game against the number six seed, Texas Longhorns. And you know, Jared Butler made 23 and Davion Mitchell made 27. I think that one of the, the big reasons why they're this good is because of their great backcourt. And a lot of experts think they should be the number one team in the nation, taking into consideration that the Big 12 is easily the best conference right now in college basketball. And now the next team we'll be putting in this tier list is the number 23 team ranked in the nation, Kansas Jayhawks. I'm sorry, Jayhawks fans. This is not your year. You guys have one player and I'll cheat you Agabazi. You guys were number fifth ranked team coming into the season in the preseason polls, but you guys have lost some games you guys really needed to win. You guys lost against Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Gonzaga, and even last night against Tennessee. You guys really need to step up your game if you guys want to make the tournament. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. The only reason why you guys are ranked is because you guys are Kansas basketball and you guys have one of the best reputations in all of college sports. But Kansas, you gotta fix your stuff up. You got one player. The next team we'll be putting on the tier list, number 12 ranked, the, Il the Illinois Fighting Illini. Honestly, I think you guys have the potential to be a tier two team, but you guys have had some devastating losses against Missouri, Rutgers, Penn State, and Maryland. But in the bright side, you guys beat Duke and even top 10 team Iowa. I think you guys have one of the best, if not the best, guard center duos in Ayo and Kofi Cockburn. I think you guys have one of the best benches in the whole D1 basketball, but those couple of losses, I think, have lowered you down in the rankings and putting you in tier three. But I think you guys have one of the best chances to win the college, the NCAA tournament, hashtag, uh, AKA the uh, March Madness, because of your experience. You guys have second year, sophomore, Kofi Cockburn, and you guys have senior point guard Ao. Don't know how to say your last name, but Ao. So I mean, I think this is a good, a good spot for Illinois right now. But I mean, they're still going strong, and yeah. Now we're going with the third ranked team in the nation, the Villanova Wildcats. I think Villanova is a very solid team. They have a uh, point guard, Colin Gillespie, and forward, Jeremiah Robinson Earl. I think that they are the third best center, uh, point guard forward duo in the whole college basketball. I think that 
Ayo, and Kofi Cockburn are number one. Number two, I got Jordan Bohannon and Luka Garza from Iowa. And third, I got Colin Gillespie and Jeremiah Robinson Earl. I think that Villanova could be a tier one team and they would have lost in overtime against Virginia Tech. I mean, Virginia Tech isn't even that good, man. I mean, they might win the ACC. The ACC is not very good this year, but if you guys would have won that game against Virginia Tech, I think you guys are good contenders to be in tier one. And now we're going with the ninth best team in the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners. Whoops. I think you guys are a solid tier three team. You guys have had some great wins this season beating West Virginia that has a very good team. But you guys have lost to Kansas, Baylor, and twice against Texas Tech. I mean, you guys had a great win against Alabama, but I really would have liked you guys to, to beat Texas Tech. But you guys have my boy, my homeboy himself, Austin Reeves. That's a bright side, one of the best point guards in the nation. But I, really I, re I would really want you guys to, to beat a good Big 12 team. I would have really liked you guys to beat Texas Tech I mean, at least once. But you guys have some still, you guys still have some ranked games in the Big 12. And, I, and for you guys to be a really good tier two team, you guys have to be one of those ranked teams in the Big 12. You guys have the best conference. There's no excuses for you guys to lose. Now, you will be ranking the 17th best team in the nation. West Virginia Mountaineers. West Virginia has a really good team this year. They have two of my favorite players in college basketball right now, Jordan McCray. And Miles McBride. West Virginia. Ah, I have to put them tier two. West Virginia has a really good team this year. One of the best teams we've seen in a long time from West Virginia. I think you guys have a really good chance at being a top three team in the Big 12. But you guys lost that game, my God. You guys got obliterated by an unranked Florida team. I mean, you guys beat Texas Tech. That was one, one rank Ahead of you guys, if you guys would have beat Florida, you guys would have been easily in the top 10. But no, you guys lose to Florida, an unranked Florida team. But I think you guys have a very good chance of redeeming yourself. And tell the whole world that loss to Florida was a fluke. You guys have back-to-back -back games against second-ranked team of the nation, the Baylor Bears, and you guys play Kansas. So I think you, if you guys win those games, I think you guys could be easily a top 10 team. If you guys would have been Florida, I could have put you in tier two. But no, you guys lost to Florida. But it's okay, man. Go Mountaineers. And now we're going with the, ter the 13th best team in the nation. The Texas Tech Raiders. If it were for me, I'll put them in tier four, but I'm not biased in my channel. I have to put them in tier three. I think Texas Tech has a decent, good team. Uh, they have a great player called Terrence Shannon Jr. His dad was a great player, but he's also a great player. Uh, I think you guys have a pretty good team. You guys have a pretty good chance of winning. I mean, at least getting top three in the Big 12. Um, you guys beat on Saturday, a good Oklahoma team, the ninth best team in the nation. But you guys lost to Baylor, to Kansas, to Oklahoma State in overtime, to Houston, and to West Virginia. But you guys have one good player. You guys definitely don't have a white kid 
that scores 20 a game as a transfer from Georgetown. So you have a, you guys have a great player in Terrence, in Terrence Shannon Jr. and I think you guys have a good future. The sixth best team in the nation, the Texas Longhorns. I think Texas has a really good team, and you guys will be going to tier two. I think one of the reasons why you guys. I've lost a lot of games. It's because you guys are in the best conference right now in the Big 12. You guys lost to Villanova in the, in the Big East Big 12 Challenge. You guys lost to Kansas, Baylor, Oklahoma, and in a buzzer beater to absolutely no one from Texas Tech. You guys have a great... McClung for the win! Oh my goodness! Matt McClung with 2.2 two left! You will not find a big three-pointer made in Big 12 play. You know what I love about that, Rich? I second-guess myself. I thought Chris Beard was going to take the timeout. Look at him. He's got He said, Mac, take it. Take it. End it. Hey, team, you guys have two of the best players in the conference, point guard Matt Coleman III and Greg Brown Jr. Wait, did you guys see that posterize that Greg Brown did yesterday to, to that Baylor player? Inside finds Brown. Brown the throw down. Look out. Oh my goodness. And I think a technical foul's been called. Yeah, that one. That was very nasty. If that's not number one in the Sports Center top 10, I have no idea what Sports Center is doing. But Texas has a really good team, really good coaching staff, and I believe they will get second in the Big 12 this year and will have a very good NCAA tournament run. And now we're going with my boys at Florida State, the 20th best team in the nation. Florida State has a really good team. They're, if they're the best, in my opinion, they're the best team with Virginia in the ACC. But ah, I got to on tier four. I think they could be higher in the rankings, a lot higher than 20. But... Due to the a lot of postponed games and cancellations of games, Florida State is sitting at 20 and at tier four. I think they really have potential to be a tier three team and be a, you know, 15, 14th best team in the nation. But they have to prove a lot more than what have they been doing. They've been beating these crummy, unpolished ACC teams by five, six points. I want the. I want to see Florida State dominate the ACC this year due to the lack of talent there is there. You got Duke, North Carolina, that they're not in their mojo. They haven't been doing very good this season, but this is Florida State's season to take control of the ACC. With forward Scotty Barnes, it's probably gonna be a lottery pick. He has to lead that Florida State team to win the ACC. Now we're going with the 10th best team in the nation, the Alabama Crimson Tide. Alabama has a really good team this year. <laughs> Just like in football, always. Unlike other years, Alabama has a really good team and is really dominating this SEC. So in that case, I have Alabama in tier three. I would have Alabama on tier two, but they had that loss against Oklahoma on Saturday. I really think that if they would have that they would have beat Alabama, I really think they would have moved up in the rankings and would have been a tier two team. But if I'm a, a bracket owner and I'm making my bracket, I would not count Alabama as a team that's gonna make it very far. And I will explain to you why. They rarely use their bench. You have a five-star point guard in the bench in Javon Quinterly, which you're not even using. You're beating up on these SEC teams, but when you have to play real competition like they did on Saturday against Oklahoma, you blew it. I mean, a guy was even tying a shoe in the middle of a play. I mean, but otherwise than that, I think they're going to win the SEC tournament. And they still have a really good team, but 
The lack of competition really worries me for Alabama fans and the Alabama program. And now are we going to Luka Garza? I mean Iowa, I'm sorry. Luka Garza, I, I'm sorry. Iowa has a really good team this year. I'm pretty sure they would be a lot higher than the eighth seed, the eighth ranked team, and they would have be, beaten Illinois. They're, one of their only losses is against Gonzaga, which obviously is the number one team in the country. But I really, I've really had a lot of high hopes for Iowa since last year. And, you know, they have... In my opinion, the best, the second best guard, center, forward duo in college basketball, and Jordan Bohannon and Luca Garza. When I heard that Jordan Bohannon was going to come back for his fifth year at Iowa, I knew that Iowa this year was going to be special. And surely they have been special this year in the Big Ten. That's why I'm going to put them in tier two. I think Iowa has one of the, the teams with most experience this year in Division I basketball. That's one of the main reasons why I think they will be a Final Four bound this year. Luka Garza is going to win Naismith Player of the Year. And Jordan Bohannon, he's not going to win the Kuzi Award, but he's going to be close. I think he's, he's complimenting Luka Garza very well, and Luka Garza is literally just a beast. So that's why I got Iowa in the tier two.